And welcome once again to Air4 Ministries International. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today I want to take the word of God from the book of the St. Matthew Gospel, chapter 22, verses 14. And it states, For many are called and few are chosen. I want to speak to you in a special way today because there is a big misconception today that gone out into the world. And everyone seems these days to be leaning to their own understanding, opposed to be acknowledging the direction of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Anointed One. There's one purpose and one prime focus for humanity, and that is to present your body living sacrifice, holy and acceptable before the highest, most living God, that's Jesus Christ. You see, we in ourselves can't do anything. We are weaklings. We, we can't impress anyone on God's behalf. We can't heal and deliver on anyone else's behalf. And we can't do it in our own power. We don't have any power. So for that reason, Christ said, Great is he that is in thee, that he that's in the world. And we've got to ask ourselves what that means. Christ wants to get inside you to empower you. The word of God that is established from the Bible is the word of God. It is a representative of life. But that life comes into reality. It comes into activation when it is verbalized by the Holy Spirit who are within you. That's why Christ is saying, Great is he that within thee, that he that's in the world. That's why Christ said, You can do greater things through him that strengthens you. You can do all things through him that strengthens you. And because of that, no sure word of God shall ever return void, but it will accomplish every single thing it sets out to accomplish. Our prime goal and aim, if we are to be called sons and daughters of the Most High God, if we are to be who we are called to be, then there is something beyond the natural we have to come to grips with. It's okay to go to Sunday school and learn Bible stories and learn this and learn that and read the Bible from Genesis to Revelations over and over and get a good idea of the Word of God and you can say it however you want and manipulate it however you want. Or a school or a Bible university or college can teach you what you want to say and how to prepare it and how to do this and do that. That sounds good, but none of it means nothing unless it is verbalized by the Holy Spirit. No man cometh unto the Father except John by the Holy Spirit. It's imperative that we come to understand that we are just vessels. But the only way to become empowered, the only way to become effective by executing the constitution of God on earth as it is in heaven, we must have the Holy Spirit in us activating every word that are spoken. The words that we are speaking of is just a formation of godliness if there is no Christ. And that's why Christ said today that many are called and few are chosen. That why Christ said today that the church only has a formation of godliness but deny the power of God. We can get in praise concerts and worship concerts and say, Lord, give me power, give me power. But what are you going to do with the power? There is purpose for the power of God and that power is to exhibit God's will in earth as it is in heaven. The same things that Christ demonstrated in the earth, when he was here, he want you to demonstrate with that same authority. That's why he commands his disciples to go in the streets and the highways and preach the word of God, heal the sick, raise the dead, and drive out demons. You don't know who you are in the member, in the body of Christ, unless you bear, your spirit bears witness with the Holy Spirit. There has to be a cohesive relationship between you and Jesus Christ. You and him have to operate in sync as one. And with that said and with that being done, then you can say beyond a shadow of a doubt, I am a Christian. You must know you are a Christian. You must know that whenever the devil presents himself before you, 
that you have the power that is encrypted upon the table of your heart. That's the word of God. And because the Holy Spirit is in you, you can now do all things through him that strengthens you. Christ said it, all things. The devil is subjected to you. The demons of hell are subjected to you. And until you come to a point in your life where you lay hands on someone and say, Thus saith the Lord, Satan, I command you to get out of this person's body. Or demons, I command you in the name of Jesus to get out of those this person's body. Well then, you don't see anything yet. Until you can lay hands on a sick person and say, In the name of Jesus, be healed. You haven't witnessed anything yet. Unless... You can go and break hell off of someone's back that are under demonic bondage and stress and emotional conflict, then you can't really call yourself a Christian yet. We must come to a point in our lives that our brothers and sisters around us, they are starving for something different. They want a fresh word from God. It's not the sweet songs you sing and you sit down and write songs and have hundreds of thousands of people worshiping and, and feeling good and joyous and, and, and merry. It's, it's not about that. You, you don't have to be shouting and blah, 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 and speaking in tongues. And, and here's the reality again about God. Let's address tongues because we are missing the whole point of this. You hear a person in the English speaking oriented um, group or culture, and all of a sudden you're preaching a, a message or you're singing a worship song and you go, blah, 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 shake, blah, 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 blah. and you say something that doesn't make sense, and people just don't wonder what's going on. They just wonder what's going on. Let me explain to you what tongues are all about. All tongues represent is a different language. And that simply means that if you speak English, and God send you to a country that speaks a different language, whether it's Russia or China or Italy, that then shows up in that country to deliver the word of God. Every vocalized word out of your mouth is a word that is spoken in that same language. In other words, the ancient word tongue represent a language. It represents a native language that native people can understand. But the beauty about it that you, the English speaking person, when you get to that place and you speak in their language, both you and the Holy Spirit and the people understand every single word that is coming out of your mouth. That's when you know you are empowered by the Holy Spirit. That's when you know you are filled with the Holy Spirit. So the garbage and gay bridge that we hear out of people's mouths when they're trying to appear as holy, when they're trying to appear that they are filled with the Holy Spirit, they are filled with nothing. They don't know God. It's all mumbo jumbo. But when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you don't have to shout Satan come out or demons come out. I mean, think about it. When Christ cast out those demons of that young man that was foaming and wobbling at his mouth and cutting himself. The demon shout, Masters, please, please, why are you punishing us? What? And Christ suffered those demons to, he sent those demons straight in swines and they ran, ran and drowned themselves. The demons know Christ. And if Christ be in you, when you shows up, the demons who are spiritually oriented see the spirit of Christ in you. And they will say, Master, why are you coming to punish me? Why are you coming to torture me? And sometimes you don't have to say the word. You just point, get out. You don't belong there. This temple is the body of the living Christ. This temple represents the Messiah. He is claiming it for his honor and glory, so you get out. You can just speak the word softly and completely. The demons understand. But when you have to be shouting to the top of your voice and trying to get saved, no, and sometimes if you are not called to do that, that demon will come out and introduce you to a beat down and possibly kill you too. So I'm trying to get your understanding 
of who Christ really is, what he represents, the authority and dominion in which he establishes. And where his presence, where his spirit is manifested in you, you can do all things. You become faith. Because why? You think it's you that doing something? You're nobody. But because you were so sincere in honoring God and presenting your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, the Holy Spirit find it possible to come and dwell in your temple and release the unadulterated word of God to every given situation it sets up to, uh, um, to speak to. And as the Holy Spirit verbalized through you, and that's why it's so essential that you let your audience know or the congregation know that you are speaking through the Holy Spirit, that it's the Holy Spirit that is speaking and that he shall have the honor and the glory. This is why it is always essential to know your humbleness, be humility. Hum be understanding humility as a member in the body of Christ is imperative to humble yourself. John the Baptist baptized Jesus Christ, but what he did, he said he's not worthy to even to untie the true laces of Jesus Christ. And I'm taking these moments to sit in this calm environment because over the years, the evolution of misconception and misleadings of God's word is more prevalent now today. It's like none other. The world is deceived. The lyrics of music and the beating of the drums and all this jumping and bopping and hopping and getting the hype thinks they're doing the right thing. And I, I have to speak of, about this because I've spoken about it several times, but we've got to keep reinforcing this because the members in the body of Christ, they don't know Christ. And the people, that, the false prophets and apostles and preachers and teachers who call themselves representatives of Jesus Christ, they themselves don't know Christ either. And it's written in the word of God that if the blind lead the blind, they all shall fall into a ditch. We must conclude in our lives once and for all who God in which we serve him. Because there are many gods. There are so many false gods. And we must understand clearly that we serve one God. He is a jealous God. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, who was, who is, and who is to come. He is the God of creation. He is the God of Adam and Eve. He is the God of the sun. He is the God of the rim. He is the God of the universe. He is omnipresent. He is all-knowing. He is all-seeing. He knows your heart. He knows your desires. And he said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. But filled with what? Is it just only the word of God? Righteousness. As the Apostle Paul said, write the word of God upon the table of your heart and wear it around your neck. Because when the word of God is, is encrypted in your heart, the foundation of righteousness is established in you. When the Holy Spirit shows up in you, for whatever the circumstances may be, it's then him operating through you. And the encrypted word of God that is in your heart comes alive and it breathes life into the dead situation that you may be faced with. It brings it breathes life of restoration. It breathes life of healing. It breathes life of deliverance. It breathes life into breaking yokes and destroying burdens. It brings life to your mentality. It breathes life to transformation of your heart and your spirit and your soul. It breathes life to your spiritual vision. It breathes life to your spiritual consciousness. When that happened, the atmosphere, the atmosphere changes tremendously. There's a whole new trajectory in which your life takes on, a new dimension beyond the natural. 
Because behold, now the old man had passed away and all things become new. The reality is that God can pour new wine into old wineskins. It is vitally important as we read the word of God, we bring ourselves to a submissive understanding before the Holy Spirit. We must come to acknowledge that we are just a human being living in a natural world with natural problems, natural diseases and natural sicknesses. But the Holy Spirit lives in a realm of righteousness, holiness, purity. And if we can prepare our bodies, our temples, a living sacrifice that can bring God to you, and Christ make it clear in his word, that behold, he stand at your door and knock, and if you open, he will come and sup with you and you with him. What a communion. But first, you've got to prepare the atmosphere that's conducive to bring the Holy Spirit to you. Prayer and fasting. If you are a newborn Christian, if you are a new babe in Christ, seeking to worship Christ in spirit and the truth, here's the steps. We talk about prayer and fasting for many times. And often people go starve themselves out. Their face bend up, twist up, and they're doing nothing but just starving themselves out. If you want Christ to really come in you and empower you, the first step of preparing your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, is prayer and fasting. The ability to turn your back against the natural foods the natural desires that you normally go after is to put them behind you, concentrate in prayer, and ask the Holy Spirit to make himself real to you in spirit. When you do that, with the consistency of prayer, that's why it's called prayer and fasting, the Holy Spirit shows up. He knows your heart. He knows the desires of your heart. He knows everything about you from the time you were born, even before you were born, from in the formation of your mother's wombs. He knows you. So when you come to a point that you want Christ to come in you and give you knowledge and wisdom, he's going to show up. You will know when he shows up. Your focus is centered on Christ only. And Christ is not a Christ of disappointment. Jesus Christ never disappoint no one yet. He always on the appointing side of the fence. He wanted to transform your mentality. He wanted to be a new creation. He wanted to understand why he is calling you. So this is why Christ said many are called and few are chosen. Because the path is so narrow that few people will find their way. But broad is the road to destruction. So that's why it's imperative that you have to narrow down your physical goals, your physical aspirations. Because we in this physical body and physical flesh don't impress God. We can't impress God. We like a rose. We just bloom in the morning and die in the evening. Just think about it. If a thousand years before us is just a day in the presence of God, what about us who only just live like 70 years or maximum or minimum and by the grace of God you live a little bit more? But that's like a second in the eyes of God. You're like a rose. You bloom in the morning and you perish in the evening. You just wither. But blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. God can do so many things in your life. Is beyond your wildest dreams and imagination. But you've got to make the first step, and that step has to be a serious step and a concentrative step. That when you go out and you say, Lord, come in and fill me, come in and change me, make yourself real to me, news me, empower me. Those are strong words to me, and that's God, we cry of God. But if you are so serious, He will do it. Now, I, I've heard in several services, so Lord, people saying, Lord, come give me power, give me power, give me power. But what are they really doing with the power? Why you want power? If you're not going to do the will of God on earth as it is in heaven, 
Why are you asking God for power? He's not hearing you. Because your mouth saying one thing in your heart is the next. We can't serve God from our mouth. We got to serve him from our heart. You can't be sounding brass and playing cymbals. We have to serve God from our heart. For a blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see our God. It's our heart that God is concerned about. The transformation of your heart. Because whatever is in your heart releases from your mouth. You see, when the Holy Spirit is in you, you have a way of drawing flesh to God. And it's not necessarily you, but obviously your physical being shows up and your physical being does all of that. But it's the Spirit of God that is inside of you. It's the presence of God that are ministering through you. These days you can't tell the secular world or from the Christian society. Because everyone is messed up. You got people want to point tell you if you're a pastor and you want a church grow, and they're not Christians. They got the answer for every problem. All of a sudden, people have the answer for God and his kingdom. Why do you want to make the church grow anyway? I mean, is it to just get some offering and tithes? Because if you really want to make your church grow, you don't have to look to anyone to do that. The Christ inside of you, the anointed one inside of you, will do the job. And growing the body of Christ doesn't mean assembling under one roof or assembling in a big, in a big, big mega church. Growing the body of Christ is preaching the word of God wholeheartedly and sincerely. That whosoever will hear the word of God will be changed. It doesn't matter where they are. They don't need to come and sit down in a building every Sunday and get. They pay their money to you and tithes and offerings. You get the luxurious pleasure of living a lavishing lifestyle. But our purpose as Christians and really devout men of God, our purpose as born again believers, our purpose operated in the in the body of Christ, go beyond your natural understanding. Our purpose is to save souls. And in order to save souls, our soul first has to be saved. And the only way our souls can be saved is through the transformation of the Holy Spirit. We have to be born of the Holy Spirit. When we are born of the Holy Spirit, we represent the Holy Spirit because you and the Holy Spirit become as one. And as I said before, what then soever you speak out of your mouth is a representation of the Holy Spirit. No word of God shall return void, but it will accomplish every single thing that it sets out to accomplish. When you say, Thus saith the Lord, my brother, you are loose. When you speak to a demonic person and speak to a demon and say you are buying, Christ said, What you loose on earth is already loose in heaven. What you bind on earth is already binding in heaven. It's time, children of God, to start loosening and start, start binding. Children of God, hear ye, hear ye the word of God. You that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God see of unto the churches. To him that overcome it shall eat of the tree of life, which in the midst of the paradise of God. It's time to say to your sick sister, you're healed. When the doctor can't do it. It's time to say that to your psychological brother that have psychotic problems, you are healed, you are loose from your infirmity, thus saith the Lord. It's time to take command and dominion as an ambassador of the kingdom of God. A police still got to run back to the station to ask the sergeant if they arrest a person if they commit offense. No. They have the power and dominion and they know that and the authority. You as a son and daughter of God have the power, dominion and authority to rescue your brothers and sisters out of demonic situations. To rescue them out of their conflict and turmoil and the hell that they're going through and experiencing. That's the power God giving you. Because when these things start to happen, it's then and only then that your, your brothers and sisters will see the manifestation of God shows up in their life. And they will turn around and give honor and glory. They will want to know what you've done. Who is operating inside of you? Who who are you to make things happen like this? 
has to be somewhat higher. That's how people are drawn to the Holy Spirit, by the demonstration of God's will in earth as it is in heaven. We must let his will be done. We must present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, and understand our powers and authority, our dominion as sons and daughters, that we can truly call ourselves Christians. Now on that note, Eternal Most Gracious Heavenly Father, I pray this word will edify someone's spirit, that they will come to a new understanding, give you honor and glory, that your name will be glorified on earth as it is in heaven, that your name will be exalted. Heavenly Father, let your power be released, a double portion of your anointing on those who pursue to worship you in spirit and in truth, who really want to know you and demonstrate the will on earth as it is in heaven, Lord. Make yourself real to them, God. Anoint them and appoint them for this time and season that they can rescue their brothers and sisters from the demonic forces of hell. Through your name and through your power, this I declare and decree in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And God bless.